in December 2014, a friend of mine forwarded me uh, a paper, a research paper from a researcher who works at Microsoft, and and maybe some of you have know about him. His name is uh, Leslie Lamport. He's uh, he started his career in the 70s, and he's done uh, magnificent, magnificent work. Um, but a little bit on the side, you know, it's not like, a, say, an Alan Kay. He's not famous like a Grady Butch or Alan Kay or, you know, some, some other uh, uh, figures of, of our industry. But he, he's truly an exceptional individual. If you don't know his work, I, I would recommend you you set aside a couple hours and, and you start exploring what, you know, his work is truly you know incredible and and so in december actually december 31st uh i was i was in sydney it was the first of january and i sent him an email and uh, he it, it was the 31st in san francisco and he responded and so we had a, a few exchanges uh maybe five or, or or six emails over the course of six months and um I, it, it helped me understand his work. Uh, you know, I'm kind of slow and obviously uh, just a fraction, a very small fraction, uh, as smart as he could be. Um, and and I realized that he he created a new kind of state machines. So a lot of people, you know, when, when you use the word state machine, they're either horrified or they have at least a, a clear picture of what I mean by that. It's a, a finite state machine, a graph of actions and states. But it's none of that. He, he invented a completely different structure, and actually his work cannot be described by finite state machines. And when I started to understand his work, I realized that you could derive the programming model that was nothing like I had seen before. It's not functional programming, it's not object-oriented programming, it's not reactive programming, it's not finite state machine, it's all of the above. And you could you could tune off certain concepts in his work and, and voila, you have functional programming. But it would be incomplete because if you look at the overall semantics of, you know, uh, his main theory, which is TLA plus, the, the temporal logic of action, uh, then it's not just functional programming or just reactive programming and obviously not object-oriented programming. I think the industry understands that object-oriented programming is really something of the past that doesn't have a, as much value as we thought it had. And so I created uh, the SAM pattern to help developers code uh, the way uh, the temporal logic of action works, because you, you, you wouldn't use this theory in practice, but if you start you know, using the semantics of the, the temporal logic of action, you start having really strong semantics of temporal logic, which none of the programming language have. You know, the, the temporal logic is in the head of the developer when he codes. And, and anything have to, that has to do, to do with application state management is either completely ignored, people try to brush it under the rug and pretend that things are stateless or immutable or whatever. Uh, and, and in reality, if you, if you embrace uh, uh, mutation and, and you make mutation the central focus of your programming model and you wrap all the other concepts around mutation, then something different happens. And, and that's what TLA Plus taught me. Uh, that's why I, I created the SAM pattern to help share uh, what I learned. And just this morning, you know, somebody in the community of the pattern uh, just wrote, uh, the pattern is like a, a, a gentle hand that, that kindly uh, uh, drive you towards uh, writing, you know, good code. And, and there is many aspects to it that are just uh, un uh, not unimaginable, but un uh, unreachable with tr like traditional programming. You know, things like safety condition. You look at Ethereum, they use smart contracts. I don't know if you, many of you have looked at smart contracts. What are the programming semantics? What is the programming model for sm smart contract? Anyone knows? No. It's a class. <laughs> it's just a class, a plain, you know, Java kind of class. <laughs> That's what a smart contract is. Um, things in TLA Plus have concept like safety conditions. So once you mutate the state, you can detect a safety condition and you realize that your system is in a state where it shouldn't be, <laughs> right? I bet Ethereum would have paid a lot of money to learn about TLA Plus. <laughs> uh, how about $100 million? 
because somebody stole, I think, something like 100, 100, 300 million, mm -hmm. just because th th there was a, a bug in their state machine. And of course, object orientation, object orientation is not very good at managing state. And, and this can be explained, but if they had safety condition in their smart contract, the smart contract would have detected the safety condition. It would have detected it was in a state that was not intended by the developer. And, and therefore, it would have stopped right there without propagating further the, the defect. AWS was one of the first uh, teams, set of teams, to use uh, 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 TLA plus. Actually, Steve Ballmer nearly fired uh, Leslie Lamport. He was quote useless, you know. Um, and but he got a Turing Award in in between, and he, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was hard to fire him after that. <laughs> but um, anyway, I, I just uh, uh, wanted to share that, and and please look at uh, Leslie Lamport's work. It's uh, truly amazing. <coughs> you. Thank you so much. All right.